Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nurse on the Go podcast. If you're heading into the program or you're already someone in the program, you may find out that it's a bit stressful and you may see that you're maybe not doing so well in some of your classes or clinicals and labs are not going your way. So today I'm going to be providing you guys with 10 tips that I really feel that are necessary in order to set yourself up for the best success in nursing school. Stay tuned to find out more. Tip number one to set yourself up for success in nursing school is to be on time for all your classes. Being on time not only allows you to be there, set yourself up, have all your stuff ready and be ready to listen to the lecture, But what it does is it builds a pattern of being prepared, being on time, being ready for what is to come. By being on time for all your classes, you're showing your classmates and your professor or instructor that you're there to learn and you're not just running in the class late. You're showing that you really want to be there and you're doing all that you can to be at that class. So another tip I'm going to have alongside tip number one for being on time to all your classes Tip number two is to attend all your classes. So I recommend attending all your classes because quite frankly, some of the things that your professors will say during class, they will never say in their slides. Or if you ever had a professor who provides some slides that have two to three words or a lot of pictures, but they just don't provide any words. And that's because they really want to encourage you to come to class. And even if your professor provides all the notes in every single slide, I really recommend that you attend all those classes. This is because you're going to get down every word or every key word information that the professor will see that could be really useful during the exam or while you're studying. And as well, it's a great way to make new friends, learn new things, and to be proactive with your education. At the end of the day, you're paying for this education and you might as well do all that you can to do the best in it. So I recommend tip number one to be on time to all your classes. This is a very strict one. Be on time. Don't be late because it really does leave a bad impression for your instructors, professors, and classmates if you're being late because no one's really going to wait up for you. And if they do, they're going to be really upset that you're making them wait for you to get there on time. You should plan it out the day before how long it takes you to get to that destination, if you have all your items prepared, pack your lunch the day before, and you'll all be set to be be there on time. And tip number two, which was to attend all your classes so that you get key information that maybe the professor didn't say on their slides or on their online. And if your school is currently going online due to the pandemic, I really recommend that you still attend all those Zoom calls or Skype calls or whatever platforms your professors use to contact you guys during lecture times, attend all of those, even if it's at home. I know during this time, you may feel like you're going to end up slacking because you're just at home and you're going to be laying in bed and you just have no desire to do any schoolwork during this time. And I understand, but now it's time to go back into school grind and to get your work done. So attend all your classes, no matter if it's online, in person, and be on time. Tip number three is to introduce yourself to your professor and to build a relationship with them. So by doing this, you're really opening up to your professor and you're saying, this is me, this is who I am, this is my name, so that they know you. Because at the end of the day, your lectures or your classes is going to be filled with more than three people. So they're not going to get everyone's names written down. They teach so many different classes, so they're just going to teach the material and go home. But if you build a relationship with your professors, you're able to then email them, get your their contacts, ask them questions whenever possible. And let's say, for example, you don't do so well on an exam and you go back to your professor or you don't do so well on an essay and you go back to your professor and you're like, hey, I don't know why I didn't do well. And they're going to be like, oh, well, you didn't follow this and this and this and this and this. But if you were actually a bit close with them and already had a relationship with them and they already know that you attend all their classes or you're on time, you're serious about this program and you really want to do well, they're actually going to be more considerate to give you a better grade or actually go out of their way to review your exam and see where you may have gone wrong and maybe give you a little booster if you're able able to communicate with them effectively and say, this is why I feel like I deserve this grade and I didn't get a grade here. They're going to be like, 
yeah, you're right. They're going to be more considerate. They're going to be like, they're serious about this. And that's why I really recommend building a relationship with them. Tip number four is to make at least one friend in every single one of your nursing school classes. So to set yourself up for success, I really recommend this tip because by having at least one friend in every one of your classes, this is so extremely beneficial for you. I can't even count the amount of times I would go to a class or I would not be able to go to a class because I was just so sick or I had an appointment to go to. And let's say the professor didn't provide any of the slides or the valuable notes online for the students who couldn't make the class. And then you may not ever get the notes because your professor is going to say you weren't there. I'm sorry, I don't have any of the notes. Ask one of your classmates. And if you don't have any friends in your class, it's quite hard to get the notes from people you don't know. So by at least having one friend in every single one of your classes, you're able to share notes, assist each other if you have any questions, you're able to talk to each other just on a regular day, be like, hey, I can't make it to class on time today because my bus is running a little bit late. Could you catch the first 15 minutes of the notes for me? And definitely if you're going to make a friend in nursing school, don't be the type that just takes all the notes from your friend but doesn't ever give back because that really does put a bad taste in people's mouth it's kind of as if you're using them and it's just it's just it gets very complicated when you do that because they're just going to be like oh maybe they're just using me for notes so definitely if your friends ever ask you for notes and they're giving you you notes as well always be open to provide them if your teacher allows you guys to share notes and then you're able to do that as well so share your notes with your classmates or your friend in your nursing school program but yeah, so at least make one friend because I promise you it will extremely come in handy when you miss a class or you have an appointment or something just happens unexpectedly and you're not able to make it to your class. But you know that you have that one friend there that will get all those notes for you. Tip number five in nursing school is to prioritize your schooling. And really don't feel bad for not seeing your friends or your family often because at this point they should be understanding so i highly recommend that you pr prioritize your school and nursing school especially because nursing school is just not a side hustle or it's just not something you can put on the back burner and just forget about it for a couple days you have to give your all for nursing school you eat breathe sleep and everything else in nursing school so I really recommend you put this in your top three priorities of your life. So it could be your job, family, and nursing school. Because at the end of the day, nursing school is very serious and you only have that certain amount of years to do the best that you can in your schooling. Tell your friends that they should be really understanding. And if your friends aren't, maybe they just don't understand how nursing school is. Because, because I, I really believe the saying that in nursing school, as a nursing school student, you know all the struggles, you know all the stress of nursing school, but those around you may not understand it unless they've gone through it. So if you're telling your friend, let's say, you're telling them, oh yeah, I can't come out tonight because I'm studying, they're going to be like, I study for my criminology exam and I studied the night before and I did well. Well, then you can tell them, not every program is the same and nursing school requires a lot of me. I just can't go weeks without studying, like I have to study. I'm so sorry, I'll make it up to you once I'm free and we can go grab a coffee. Just let them know that you'll be able to hang out with them when you can and they should be understanding. I know those who I have around me, my friends and my family are very understanding of nursing school because they see me studying all the time. And so I really recommend that you prioritize your school because if you don't, you may end up falling off the side tracks and getting a bit distracted with temporary satisfaction of going out with your friends and having drinks. But is it really worth it? Tip number six is to start studying early and please do not wait last minute. So by starting to study early, this gives you a head start in knowing everything for that exam coming up and you will be prepared your stress levels will go down by a thousand percent because you started studying early. And another benefit of starting um, to study early, what happens is you're able to ask your professor questions early on rather than later. Because let's say you wait till the last night and the professor is unavailable and you're like, I don't know the answer to this. This is a key concept that I need to understand and I don't understand this. Your professor will probably be one of the best ways to go to get an answer out of because they know it like the back of their hand 
So that's why I recommend you know it early on. So let's say you go back to one of your classes and you're like, hey, professor, I don't know what this is, this is, this is, and they will clear it up for you. But if you wait to the last minute, you may not have enough time to be able to study effectively and be 100% prepared because you're too busy stressing alongside studying. So that's why I recommend extremely that you guys go and start studying earlier. It will be an extreme lifesaver. Tip number seven is a really great one for if you're someone who attends classes, which you should be doing, but what you should always do is always go over and read your textbook and your notes before going to your class. So what this does is it brushes up you with every single one of the concepts that you'll be going into in your class. You can definitely prepare some questions that you can ask your professor in class. Or what this also does is it gives you a better understanding once you go into the class. So let's say I didn't read any of my textbooks or that chapter that I'm going to be learning in class today and I just went to class. The probability of me listening and writing down key information will probably be at a let's say 30%, but if I went into class with a preliminary understanding of what the concepts are, what my questions are, what I'm looking for, and what I really want to understand during that lecture and get out of it, I will be listening at a 101% because I'm looking for this concept and if the teacher doesn't go over it, I'm going to ask this question. So that's why it's very effective for you to go in with a understanding of what you're going to be doing before you just go there because if you're just going there to just go there really is there really a point no a for effort though for going to that class but not really good enough for being understanding and prepared enough to know what you're going there for so look through your notes for that chapter and look through your textbook for that chapter prior to going to that class and i promise you the class will be 10 times different than if you were to go with no understanding on what you're about to learn. Tip number eight is one that will save you lots and lots of money, and that will be to never pay a full price for your textbooks, only unless you have to. So there are so many resources to get your textbooks either cheaper or secondhand. So by getting it cheaper, you can definitely go and check online websites that have a price much less than the one that they're selling it for retail or from the original brand. You can go that route. You can check Amazon. Along with that, there are so many students that just went through the same program as you and they definitely probably will not be using their textbooks ever again. So what they end up doing is they sell it. They sell it on the marketplaces, definitely on Facebook. And that is definitely one that I recommend that you go check out. So go on your Facebook marketplace, just search up the textbook title and you will be guaranteed to find at least one person that is selling the same textbook. But if you're definitely someone who prefers brand new textbooks, you can go for that. Just maybe wait for when the textbook goes on sale and then you'll get your best bet with that. And that's why I really recommend that you guys buy your textbooks cheaper than full price because they all add up. So you may say, oh, I just have one textbook for $100, but then you're going to have another one for another class, and then you're going to have your lab books, and then you're going to have your clinical books, and then it just keeps on racking up, and then you're going to be like, wow, I really just emptied my pockets on five textbooks that I'm only going to use for a few months. Buy your textbooks secondhand or cheaper, and you will thank me later. Tip number nine is one of the best ways to set yourself up for success in nursing school and it's also another money saver and it's to never purchase anything not even one thing until you've gone to your first class or your professor or instructor has already advised you on what you need so what i mean by this is obviously don't go to your class without a pencil or a piece of paper go in with the essentials pencil piece of paper um your backpack yes go in with that but what i mean is do not make expensive purchases such as your stethoscope blood pressure cuff scrubs shoes for nursing school don't go into nursing school with all of those things because you may not even need them or maybe your school provides them for you and you never knew and then you just spent all this money that you can't potentially return so that's why i always recommend you wait for the very first class hear what the professor has to say firsthand if you actually need something for the program and that will save you so much money because i can't even tell you how many classes i've gone to with this understanding that oh i'll maybe need this or maybe i'll need this but i never actually bought them before the program and turns out we never even needed them because this year the professor doesn't want us to use 
any textbooks and they told us to get a specific color of scrubs and they told us to get a specific brand of a stethoscope. I know that one too. So they already have their rules and guidelines for what they want you to have in nursing school starting from your specific year. So just because the year before did something doesn't mean your year is going to do it. So that's why I really recommend that you just wait. Wait for that first day of class and then if they tell you what you need, you can go all off and get as many scrubs as you want. But just wait for that first day of class or if your professor or instructor has already advised you on what you need, definitely go and get all those items and be prepared for whenever you need them. Tip number 10 is another perfect way to set yourself up for success in nursing school and this is a great one to wrap this all up with and it's to never beat yourself over not getting a good grade on an exam or test. So what I want you to do if that ever happens to you is to use getting that bad grade or maybe a grade that you weren't expecting to get. Use that as motivation to do better on your next exam because at the end of the day, not every exam that you do will be perfect. So just know and remind yourself that you tried your best. What I always do if I get a grade that I just wasn't expecting or if I really wanted A plus and let's say I got an A or something, I really didn't... Well, naturally, you tend to just beat yourself over your like... I really thought I did so well or I feel like I deserved a better grade and let's say it's multiple choice and you really just can't fight it or you just can't say to your professor, why was this the right answer? It's okay. You can have a 50% in one exam and get a 100% in the next exam and already have a 75% now. And that's simply because in nursing school, you're going to have numerous exams. So what I always tell myself whenever I get a grade that I wasn't expecting or a really low grade that really didn't meet the mark that I wanted, I always give my 1,010% on the next exam and the one after that to bring up my overall grade and I can still end that class with an A+. It's all about positivity and optimism and trying your best having discipline and getting that work done and telling yourself, I got this really bad grade and I never want that to happen ever again. So you're going to try that much harder. Don't beat yourself over it and don't say, just because I got this bad grade, I'm never going to try hard again. Nursing school is not for me. Do not ever say that to yourself. Everyone gets a bad grade in nursing school or if you don't, amazing congrats for you you may have an exam that you really don't do well but please never beat yourself over it it's okay yeah naturally you're gonna be like wow i just did really bad <laughs> i feel like crying but that's in the moment after that you have 10 more exams to get through so give your 1010 percent on all those exams and at the end of it that first exam you did or that exam you did in the middle will actually not even count really because you did so well in all your other exams so please don't beat yourself over it. You're going to do amazing in all your other exams. Thank you all so much for tuning in to today's podcast. I hope you all listen to some of these tips and use them during nursing school. And I promise you, and I guarantee you that this will help you set up yourself for nursing school in the best successful way possible. And don't forget to tune in at my Instagram at the nurse on the go podcast where I post motivational and educational posts almost every single day. So that will brighten up your day any day. Thank you so much once again. Talk to you soon. The Nurse on the Go.